When you speak of Gucci, though, man, I mean, that chicken talk. And it's 1017. Oh, oh, man. That's cold, That's cold, too. Oh, that's cold yeah. Bladder, so you already know what that means. There's about to be some magic in here. Uh, Chicken Talk. Yeah. Talk to me about that project right there, man, because, I mean, the Burn One freestyle was hard as hell, too. Hey. So I know that had to feel good to get that one out, too. It did, man. It was just funny, dog. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was funny. The whole project was good, man, because I met him. I initially called him because... He was a part of Never Again Records, and they did the Black Tea, the, yeah. the response to White Tea. And I was like, what else y'all got? And yeah. he was the one that I called the record label. He was the one that picked up. I go there. It's eight people on the song. He's the only one there, and he immediately takes me to Zaytoven's house. My God. Like, leaves that studio. He takes me over there and plays me Icy. What? And I was like, who's that on the hook? He's like, Lil Will. I was like, you auto-tuned him? He was like, yeah. I thought it was the worst thing ever, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? I love Lua. Looking for Nikki and all that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? What Just about. initial reaction. Exactly. I was like, all right, bro. I was like, I don't really get it. I was like, but all good. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, you want to do a tape? And he didn't get it. He didn't know nothing. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just straight up told me no, which was good, bro. I much, you know, anybody, just be honest. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just say, you don't want to do something? Don't make me hit you up 17 exactly. times. Try to hit you up or whatever, because I don't on. play the game with nobody either. You know Thanks. what I'm saying? And so. Uh, he got out. Uh, he got out of jail after um, that pool sick incident. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And the trap house that came out did good, but then that happened. Everything slowed down. Yeah. He put out my chain. That wasn't doing too well. He called me yeah. out of the blue. What, what was that thing you were talking about? You gonna do a big state? Yeah. What was that? I was like, yeah. And so that was like where it all kicked off. You know what I'm saying? So it was a beautiful time, like just being with him. Luckily, he shared the story of me initially telling him just about mixtapes yeah. once we started working together in his autobiography. I thought it was pretty cool. You didn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Hell, it's so dope, bro. There's so many people that try to like erase me out of their history. Or just people in general that just like erase the people that came up and, and you know what I'm saying? And that's why I come in. You see <laughs> you know, that around here. Radio show. Nah, Gucci, uh, early Gucci. Did you think that that young man that jumped on that dog on mixtape with you was going to turn out to be the trap god? No. No, but you know, I knew like, just like Dro, he was funny. I'm like, why is he rapping about this serious ass shit? And it's so funny. Yeah. He's talking about robbing people. And I'm laughing. <laughs> this is doing something. This is entertainment. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's, it's straight entertainment. And we worked, we worked for about a whole month. And the only thing that we did that was new was probably the Burn One Freestyle, maybe one or two new songs. <laughs> the whole time it was just like, we were in the studio, but it was like partying, yeah. going to Club Blaze, coming back at four in the morning, but just watching him. Yeah. Like, he would get a kick out of himself. Yeah. Like, he'll get in there and just rap, and he'll rap from the top to the bottom of the beat and be like, put another one on. Say the wildest shit. I didn't even know I was going to say that. You know what I'm saying? And get back in there. But he was just having fun with the man. And I was like, it was just a good time, you know? And it was funny, man. I vividly remember, like, when we first dropped it. Because yeah. he just let me run point, you know? Ooh. I was like, he let me. I took the cover. If you look on the back, it says Burn One Photography. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they have Burn One Photography. I just Did put it back there. The whole thing. Shit, the whole thing. You know, yeah. I, I decided to make it a double disc and all that stuff. I did the pressing. I did everything, you know? My and so I remember going to the discount mall on Old National. Yeah. And we go in there. And uh, I had some CDs, and Gucci was waiting in the car. I had, like, a RAV4 or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he was in the car. And uh, I no, no, no. I was in my pickup truck, my dad's red pickup truck, because yeah. it's in the uh, book. And uh, and so we went, and uh, I went inside by myself, and I was trying to sell the CD, and I was selling them wholesale for $4 a piece. Yeah. And the guy was like, ain't nobody finna buy this. He's cold. I was like, you lost. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, initial, I was like, all right. I go outside. It's already people congregating around the car. He didn't turn it up in the car, and everybody's coming around him. They're like, what is this? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Dude comes out the store within 10 minutes, bro. Let me get 40 of them. <laughs> you know? Exactly. It was some powerful shit, bro. It just reminds me, like, if you believe in something, take it to the level. Take it to 10. Do it. Don't talk just talk about it. it. Do it. I had the hard copies, and I had him with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We showed up. We were there, you know? Preparation and opportunity coming together. Absolutely. You and know? I honed all that just from being in school. I used to get out of school every day in high school and drive around and put my CDs on consignment. Ooh. And I go to DBS Sounds, yeah. Super Sound, all the different shops. I met Gorilla Zoe before he was Gorilla Zoe right there in Five Points. Talk to he me. was selling CDs. And I remember he had a song called Bet You Can't Do It On A Dick. And I was like, <laughs> again, just lost. You know what I'm saying? And then, no lie, within six months, he had the hood record the out, hood and that yeah, shit was going. And I was like, this is one of the hardest songs I've ever heard. Exactly. So it just taught me not to judge people so harshly. And I sucked that. at one point at everything before exactly. I got better at it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to give people room to grow. Radio Shouty. Shouty.